I know, I know, it looks different behind me. Rest assured, the DVD shelves will be coming back. Uh, I, I recently moved, and uh, the DVD shelves are, it's a long story, they're, they're kind of in, in an area where it just wouldn't be all that great to film right now. Uh, and as soon as I have the room, I'm going to move them down uh, into what will be the, uh, the TV room, and uh, then they will be behind me once again. Uh, it's a shame that they can't be behind me today because uh, they're finished. They're complete. My DVD collecting days have all but come to a close. Uh, I will explain the uh, ambiguous nature of that statement in a moment um but yeah i always knew 2020 was probably going to be the it was going to be the wrap-up year it was going to be the year where the last few things came out um now it, in the end it was sort of a, a spending spree um it, it was uh uh really kind of figuring out how to cram in Certain movies that I, I, I wanted to have, I'd never seen. Uh, it, 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 I'm not going to lie. It, it's a, it was a little bit of a, uh, you know, an addict saying, you know, just one last bender. Just one more. Um, but no, I, I, I feel pretty content with how, uh, how it's ended up. 2020 was a rough year for movies uh, in that we didn't really get many. You know, I went to the theater once in 2020 when I saw Bad Boys for Life in January. That was it. That was the last movie I've seen in the theater. And it's the last movie I'm probably going to see in the movie theater for quite some time. Uh, the state of movies in 2021 a lot of people think that it's it's the state of movies is dire that we're uh, that covid has has caused a decline in movies especially with the announcement that Warner Brothers was going to be moving their 2021 movie schedule onto HBO Max same day as the release in theaters which has been a highly criticized move that I'm about to defend. Consider this a like an old school stop the hate. Um, this was coming. I've been saying this for years, ever since I did the first of these videos. The days of, uh, you know, having to wait three, four months for a Blu-ray and then having to wait an additional six months or so till to streaming... That was coming to a close. That was ending. Universal Pictures were the first to sort of push the boundaries when they released Trolls uh, World Tour. Uh, much to the, the dismay of uh, AMC theaters. But this was coming. This is the future. I've been saying it forever. There is no... It, it's I, The people who are complaining about this, I, it, it reminds me... So much of 20 years ago, musical artists complaining about, you know, there'll always be a place for CDs. You know, all oh, this, this downloaded music, you know, it's bullshit. That's what this sounds like to me. And 20 years later, you know, how many CDs have you bought lately? Um, now, that's not to say that the theatrical experiences. Uh, coming to an end. And I have an opinion on that. It's not a popular opinion, but I do have an opinion on it. Um, 
back when Titanic came out, they did an interview with James Cameron. And Titanic at the time, he spent uh, uh, more money on that than any movie had ever had spent on it before. And a, a reporter asked him, how do you justify that? And he said, well, we need to raise the price of movie tickets to like $50 a ticket to accommodate filmmakers having these bigger budgets. And at the time, I thought, wow, what, a, what an asshole. Um, and at the time, he was. That, that was a completely elitist thing to say. But <laughs> 23 years later, Here's the thing. People pay tons of money on tickets to sporting events that they could watch for free on TV. People pay ungodly amounts of money to go to a concert to hear music played that they could download, you know, or, or, or watch the concert pay-per-view for, for a fraction of the price. People pay for the experience. And that's what the theatrical thing needs to be from now on. My opinion, make every screen an IMAX screen. You're going to have fewer theaters. It's going to happen. It's just going to. You know, a lot of these big chains are going to go out of business and there's a good chance that movie studios will find a way to buy these theater chains. You'll have the Warner Brothers theaters that exclusively play Warner Brothers movies, Disney theaters and such. Make every screen an IMAX screen. Restore these theaters to the old days when they were palaces. When you'd go in to these these uh, splendid theaters that uh, that you know that that you don't see anymore, you don't see that anymore. Now you just got the sticky floors and the you know uh, it's 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 not a, a exactly an upscale thing to go to a movie anymore. Um, make these theaters an experience. You walk through the door. You know, and and it's like going to a basketball game. It's like going to a concert or an opera or something maybe even classier for certain movies. It's an event. Fathom already does it for, for a lot of releases. And yes, $50 at least per ticket to get in. And... You'll say, well, that excludes so many people. Well, basketball games exclude so many people from going. Concerts exclude so many. I haven't gone to a concert in years. I've looked into concerts uh, that I've thought about maybe going to, seen the price of the tickets and went, no, nope. uh-uh, no way. Even if I could afford it, I wouldn't pay that much money. Um, so movies becoming that, and, you know, you'd only release the big movies. This wouldn't be for, uh, you know, smaller little movies. Those, they go to Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Netflix, whatever, and that's it. But the Marvel movies, the Star Wars movies, Fast and the Furious, things like that, they're events. You're going to have to make fewer of them. That's the other thing. You can't have a movie every week. So here's what you do. You take, let's say, Fast and the Furious 9. You release it day and date, streaming, and to the theater. You play it for one week in the theater. It's an event. That's it. One week. And then maybe you move over to another movie. But you can't release like five big blockbuster movies that all have to make a billion dollars on the same day or within the same week or two. You can't do it anymore. It's not going to work. These big actors are not going to be able to get $50 million paychecks anymore. Because you know what? It, it, it is getting to that point where 
Robert Downey Jr. can say, well, I deserve $50 million plus, you know, 5% off the back end and to play Iron Man or to play Dr. Doolittle. And studios are going to start saying, Dude, we could get somebody else to do it. Look what happened with Chris Hemsworth. With Chris Hemsworth, they, they found a virtual unknown and they put him in a movie and it became a blockbuster and he became a star. And they paid him a fraction of the price of a downy. That's going to be happening more. You can not like it. You can like it. You can say, you know, I want it to stay the way that it is. It's not going to. COVID only sped it up. So I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because the streaming services, yeah, they release a lot of crap. They do. I mean, for every good movie on Netflix, there's 10 movies that nobody ever watches and they get lost completely on, on that site. But when Netflix tries, when Netflix puts effort into it, you get The Irishman. You get a movie. Martin Scorsese comes out to all the studios, walks around Universal and Warner Brothers and 20th Century Fox and you know all these different studios and says, I want to make a gangster movie, which is his his thing. That's what he's known for. Our, our greatest living director says, I want to make a movie in the genre I'm best known for, starring the biggest name actors from that genre, collaborating for the first time. And the studios all said no. Except for Netflix. Netflix said, here's a blank check. You do whatever you want. These studios aren't going to make Marriage Story or Roma. Um, hell, look at Extraction with Chris Hemsworth. You know, that comes out straight to Netflix. That could have been a big theatrical experience. And, and I was perfectly happy watching it on this TV uh, in the comfort of my living room which is something that I think people have really gotten used to over the last year. I can hit pause. If I've got to go to the bathroom, I don't have to miss anything. I can make popcorn and, and have a soda and stuff for, you know, just by going to my fridge. Uh, I'm not, you know, back when this was when my kids were little taking them to a movie. That was a $50 day without buying snacks i mean families can't afford that anymore we're looking at you know real economic problems in this country and the the you know i you hear these people saying well we've got a vaccine people are going to be going back to the movies and by april you know if they released uh kong versus godzilla or if they released uh, uh, whatever other Warner Brothers Dune or something. They'd make a billion dollars. No, they wouldn't. They really wouldn't. And you can't expect Warner Brothers to just sit on these movies that are costing them a million dollars a month to not release. They're going to lose money by putting these movies onto HBO Max, but at least they're going to make something. At least they're going to drum up support for HBO Max, which is kind of their primary thing right now. And even though they're saying, well, it's just for 2021. Really? Do you really think that in 2022, they're going to take that away from us? That they're going to say, we know that you've gotten used to this. We know that you like this. We're not, now we're not going to do it anymore. No, and Disney Plus is going to follow. Paramount Plus is going to follow. They're waiting to see what happens with HBO Max. But do you think that Disney Plus is just going to sit on Black Widow for another year until they think maybe it might make a billion dollars when people are finally comfortable going back to the movies? It's not going to happen. I'm all for this. I know a lot of people aren't, and they're talking about, well, there are people's jobs at stake, people who work at theaters. I understand that. There were people who worked at record shops. 
it sucks. But genie's out of the bottle. You can't put it back. As for physical media, it's going away. I know a lot of you don't want to hear that. And you're saying, no, there'll always be a place for Blu-rays. The thing about, relate, you know, look at, again, Warner Brothers with releasing everything to HBO Max. And let's look at a movie like Dune, right? A movie like Dune has to make a billion dollars in order to be successful. Not because it has to make that much money to justify the budget, but it has to make that much money because they split the profits with theater chains. And then they have to spend money to manufacture the Blu-ray discs. Or somebody can push a button and it can go right up on HBO Max for free. They don't have to do anything. It's just a matter of uploading it. That's what they're going to want to do. That's how they're going to make more money. And if they can make more money doing that, you bet your ass they're going to do it. And a lot of people are, you know, you hear like Legendary Pictures is going to sue them. And, you know, uh, these agencies are going to sue them. You think Warner Brothers didn't run this past legal before doing it? You think Warner Brothers didn't make sure they had the right to do this? This is going to happen. This is all going to happen. We've already gotten Wonder Woman 1984. A movie that uh, I have no intention of buying on Blu-ray. I have the DC movie. I, I don't have Shazam. I don't have Birds of Prey. I stopped at Aquaman. The days for me of needing the physical disc, needing to add it to my shelf, those days are over. With a few possible exceptions, as I said. Now... What are these caveats that I'm allowing myself? They're basically things that are, at least right now, theoretical. They may not even happen. Two directors who I have collected all of their work are Woody Allen and Quentin Tarantino. Woody Allen already has a new movie made called Rifkin's Festival. If and when that movie comes out on a, a physical disc, I will buy it. And I will add it to my Woody Allen collection. Because I have every other Woody Allen movie, and that's a lot of them. And to just stop feels weird. And Tarantino says he's only going to make ten movies. I've got nine of them. If he's only got one more, I would buy it. Especially if it's like a um, box set. You know, and it's got like the, the uncut Kill Bill and stuff like that. I would absolutely buy that box set. Um, there's a couple of franchises that haven't really wrapped up. And I'm waiting to see how they wrap up. John Wick, which, you know, I have the first three. And John Wick 3 kind of ends on a cliffhanger. And they say that they're going to make four and five back-to-back. -back. If they make four and five back-to-back -back and they are conclusive endings, I'll buy John Wick four and five. The other franchise is the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World franchise. I have not even seen Fallen Kingdom because I heard it was so terrible. If Jurassic World Dominion comes out and it's a good movie and it's a conclusive ending, ending to that franchise. I'll buy Fallen Kingdom, I'll buy Dominion, and I'll have that in that six-pack Jurassic Park case. Uh, the only other one that I might very only possibly make an exception for is Ghostbusters Afterlife. And there's a lot of caveats on that one. First, it's got to be Ghostbusters 3. It can't just be, here's the Ghostbusters for five seconds to show that there's a continuity. It's got to be Ghostbusters 3. It's got to be a good movie on top of that. It can't end on a cliffhanger. Like, oh, 
you know, we're splitting it in two and here's Ghostbusters Afterlife Part 2 or, you know, whatever the next thing is coming out next year. It's got to have an ending to it. They can have sequels to it, but you don't have to... A movie can have an ending and then still have a sequel. The Indiana Jones movies did it. James Bond movies do it. Uh, Ghostbusters movies did it. And it has to come in a, a, a three-pack. Not a four-pack. A three-pack. If it came in a Ghostbusters trilogy box set, I'd, I'd have a hard time not buying that. Because I've waited for Ghostbusters 3 for 30-some years now. But aside from those five exceptions, I don't really have any interest in it anymore. You know, I, I, I finished off my, my franchises. Um, I will be reviewing a lot of the, the newer releases in the next few weeks. I'm okay with stopping. I'm okay with just saying... It's time to accept that I don't have to buy Wonder Woman 1984. I have an HBO Max subscription. I don't have to buy, uh, if they ever release Extraction on Blu-ray. I have, it's on Netflix. Now, I, I keep my DVDs and my Blu-rays because I always say there could come a time when the whole thing goes down when or or Netflix goes out of business or whatever happens and then you lose all of them I'll always have the discs the discs will always give me the chance to watch a movie and to watch a movie in a in a the best possible condition but it's time to accept that the future is to just sit down turn on my PlayStation 4 probably PlayStation 5 at some point in the near future and to say let's just go to a streaming service and watch the movie there I love my discs I love my blu-rays I'm very proud of my DVD collection but everything has to come to an end at some point this show however will not I'll be back next week with a review of Tenant see you then Are there any similarities in the book that pertain to your real life? A fictional autobiography. Occasionally situations that are taken almost verbatim, but uh, so I sat down and I just started. Dreams are the killers of men, really. Everyone chases after them, believing he'll be the one to make it. Will not be the first alien life form brought back to Alpha Century Prime for study. Mission priority free. Upon termination of human specimen, collect and preserve all vital organs, spinal fluid, and bone marrow samples for future study. Today. I'm finished. I'm here to do the people of this country a favor. Who said those dogs at the CIA have no say in the politics of my country? Um, did that fix the world? Did his death change history for the better? For a time. Could it be you don't have the stomachs for it? Could it be you've never held a gun before in your life than now as you stand in your face to face with a great man? They complain about bad dreams, nonsense like, like that. Silly stuff. stuff. We, we all get over with bad dreams. Every 4th of July, I break out in cold sweat and put them in the hills with fireworks blowing up all night. I want to hide away all day. When the when final, final note was played, played his, his wife, wife and child, child would, would cheer, cheer so loud. loud. He would hear, he would hear them, them amidst, amidst the din. The din.
I have learned that people move. People move and travel and die. I don't wish to live in my memories, but to make new ones, so that I may leave this place that no longer holds joy for me and set out to find new joy in other worlds. sort of gave myself the challenge of, okay,